You're listening to Thyroid Talk with Dr. Angela Mazza, D.O. Welcome. I'm Dr. Angela Mazza, D.O., a thyroid endocrine and metabolism specialist with a private practice in Central Florida. My goal for this podcast is to define and demystify the thyroid gland and thyroid-related medical conditions. By providing information in an easy-to-understand format, I hope to help patients better understand the ways in which their bodies work and to help patients thrive. I want to discuss subjects of interest to our listeners, so I encourage you to send in your questions, comments, and topic ideas for future shows. You'll find our contact info in the show notes. Now, I'm happy to introduce my friend and co-host, Don Sheffield. Thanks, Dr. Mazza. I'm delighted that you asked me to join you. And just so our listeners know, I'm not only your friend and co-host, I'm also your patient. By helping me better understand my health, you've made a big difference in the way I think about and approach my life. So my role here will be to represent a patient's perspective. I'm glad you're here. As you know, we spent a lot of time and had a lot of fun playing this podcast. Deciding where and how to begin was a big consideration. Yes, it was, and an important one. For patients with limited medical understanding, like me, thyroid and associated topics can seem very complicated, even overwhelming or scary at times. Does any particular problem come to mind as far as getting information, either for you or your friends? Well, complex information isn't always presented in ways we can easily understand. And we might be a little nervous about asking too many questions or asking the wrong questions, especially in a busy doctor's office. Sometimes I don't even think of the question I should have asked until I get to the parking lot or or home. Our absence of medical training can make it hard to know what we should ask. But that happens to me at our veterinarian's office, too. (laughs) Could be thyroid brain fog. I think that happens to all of us from time to time. That's why, in part, we decided it's best to begin at the beginning, with the most basic foundation and definitions that we'll build on in future episodes. On that note, let's start with my medical training. So that listeners can get to know me a little bit better from the outset, my actual title is DO, or Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine. When I first embarked on my medical career journey, I had always been interested in whole body wellness. And you know, it seems to me that you look at a patient's whole life, not just seeing us as a set of isolated symptoms or numbers. Is that part of a DO's training? Yes. Osteopathic medicine is built upon how different body systems work together. I always tell people who ask me the difference between a doctor with a DO and a doctor with an MD, that is allopathic trained physician, is that DOs have similar basic training, but a little more additional training. And how did you decide to specialize in thyroid issues? Because I gotta say, that might not have been my first choice. I have to admit that I pr- figured out pretty early what did not interest me surgery, OBGYN. I probably would not have excelled at. Endocrinology, the study of all things hormone, had always fascinated me. It's very abstract and relies upon knowing how different elements, peptides, and enzymes interact and produce change within the body especially concerning metabolism, which brings us to thyroidology, the study of the thyroid. The thyroid is a very powerful gland. It's small and butterfly-shaped, positioned at the base of the neck, right in the front. It secretes thyroid hormones that serve many functions of the body, like helping us burn calories and stay warm, stay active without feeling sleepy and sluggish. It serves so many more purposes, too, which we'll cover in future episodes. It's really fascinating, or is that just me? Well, you know, I cannot answer that. I don't want to answer that question. (laughs) No, it is fascinating. I'm just kidding. But are you sure you didn't choose the thyroid because it is sort of weirdly beautiful? I think a lot of folks do feel that it is beautiful, and I can see why. And it's fairly easy to find thyroid-related art if you look for it. That really surprised me. (laughs) Well, thyroid hormone is second only to cortisol, our stress hormone, in regard to hormones that are needed to live and survive. 
To be so small, the thyroid plays a huge role in our overall health. The thyroid has a role in just about every system in our bodies. Because the hormones it releases affect so many things the body does, it's helpful to see a healthcare provider regularly and have your blood tested regularly too. to Be sure those hormones are balanced. That way we know if we need to use medication or other options to keep them in the right range. And there is a right range where we feel our best. It's when the thyroid hormones and other factors get out of range, either too low or too high, that we may see problems. Without the blood work analysis results, symptoms of too high or too low thyroid hormone may be easy to miss and sometimes easy to ignore. Well, let me ask a question about those hormones. I only know of two of them, T3 and T4. Are they the same type of hormones that are involved in, say, the teenage growth years or maybe other functions we normally consider related to hormones? Well, T3 stands for triiodothyronine, and T4 stands for thyroxine. The thyroid mainly makes T4. T4 gets converted to T3 in tissues like the liver and the kidney. T3 is active thyroid hormone and does all the wonderful things that we correlate with thyroid effects. Teenager puberty hormones are a little bit different. That's a whole other conversation. Well, we can have that one on a different day. And I'm embarrassed to confess that I thought the T in T3 and T4 just stood for thyroid. (laughs) Yeah. So you can use the numbers shown on the lab report, but also how a patient is feeling, how they look, how alert they are, and many other factors to decide which medications to prescribe or other actions to take. That's right. And at times, additional tests or lifestyle changes may be recommended. You know something about that now, Dawn. I sure do, more than I wish I knew sometimes. But the thing is, for example, years ago, I did not focus on my unique metabolism and my unique thyroid situation because, honestly, I did not know they were unique. More important, I had no idea I could do anything to impact them other than to take a prescribed medication. So I'm glad in retrospect about the changes I made, all of them. Wasn't so glad at first, as you <laughs> may recall. The hardest change, though, is always accepting that change is needed. And I still have a lot of work to do, of course. It's a process, never a straight line, and that can be hard. It is indeed a process, and it sometimes can be a very long one. It's very easy to get frustrated. We may have to try different things medications, or lifestyle changes, or both, and more, including what we had some control over. And you know, I initially saw a doctor not because of blood work, but because suddenly I was losing an alarming amount of hair. I don't recall having any other symptoms at that time. How does the thyroid affect hair loss and why? And in my case, at least, it appears to be um, reversible. We have thyroid hormone receptors that affect skin and hair. Too much or too little thyroid hormone is not a good thing, especially when it comes to hair. Some of the most common complaints that I hear from patients with thyroid disorders are hair loss, dry skin, and breaking nails. Unfortunately, when it comes to hair, what we see is a result of damage to the hair follicle that was about three months ago. So if it is related, a person has to be a little patient for new hair growth. Hair and thyroid would be a great topic to discuss in the future, too. Yes, and I would like to better understand the hair versus thyroid connection. It's an important one to a lot of us, I bet. But the breaking nails and the dry skin, I had no idea. What are some of the other reasons patients seek medical help for thyroid issues? Some other common complaints have to do with weight gain or weight loss, feeling fatigued, sleeping problems, feeling too hot, too cold, brain fog, mood changes, muscle aches and pains, heart racing, and GI issues, either loose stools or constipation. Many women also note menstrual changes. These are just the tip of the iceberg, and everyone is a little bit different. I usually like to keep a checklist of symptoms from the very first visit and then revisit those questions at follow-up visits. Some people might have new problems, but many times once we get the thyroid a bit more on track, People completely forget about the issues they had to start with. So I have to ask, hey, what about your fatigue? How's that going? And then they may say, 
oh, fatigue, I totally forgot about that. So it's interesting to me because it's not all about testing. It's also about how the patient and the doctor are observant and, and really seeking answers. I remember being relieved many years ago that my hair loss was just related to my thyroid. That's really funny to me because back then I knew nothing about how important the thyroid is or how much it does. I don't recall anyone explaining anything about it to me, nor did I ask, I bet. Oh. Well, regarding being observant, I spend a lot of time asking patients about their lives. I ask about how much they sleep, for example. Explain the importance of sleep and its effects on weight. I like to get an idea of what their daily routines are, including what they like to eat, um, tolerances, work schedule, etc. As I recall, when you asked me, and more than once, about my sleep habits, I think I was really defensive about how little I valued it. I've come full circle now, but I was once really unaware of all the hidden ways sleep benefits the body and the brain. I thought, well, as long as I can function, it's fine. Do you sometimes have to keep bringing up a subject over time to encourage a patient to make changes you know will enhance the quality and maybe even the length of their lives. Like the issue of sleep, for example. I hope I'm not the only stubborn one, because that one took me a long while to understand and conquer. And again, it was my thinking about the issue that had to change first. Oh, yes. And you are not alone, and you are not stubborn. Well, now we're going to find out a little bit more about that (laughs) in these next few episodes. (laughs) But really, you were also interested in my hobbies, my pets, my lifestyle. I was so surprised. No one had ever asked me about sleep, I don't think. You never saw me as a number on a lab report, and that's it. And when you did review lab report numbers with me, you were interested in how my actions might be responsible for certain numbers, good and bad. My cortisol level, or low salt, for example. Cortisol and thyroid hormone go hand in hand. If cortisol levels are too high or too low, or not on a good curve, it is next to impossible to get a good handle on thyroid levels. And sometimes I wonder, too, if folks, including me, maybe don't always want to know too much about what's wrong. That way we don't have to feel even a little bit responsible for it. We can swallow a pill and, oh well, after that, nothing to do with me. It's all up to that medicine. And of course, often it is not, but I'd sure like to believe that it is. (laughs) And again, our ability to understand our situation enough to impact it has to be clearly explained, maybe more than once. That has a lot to do with why I went to endocrinology. It's a medical art that combines science with the study of our lives and all that they encompass. It's why I wanted to do this podcast, too, to help folks understand how their lives, their diets, stress management, sleep patterns, everything are tied to both thyroid and overall health. I think we've gotten a good start on that. I hope our our listeners agree. And I hope you'll continue listening to Thyroid Talk with Dr. Angela Mazza. We have many more interesting episodes and guests planned. We'll build on today's foundation and cover some topics I think you'll find meaningful. In fact, our ne- next episode, we'll start covering hypothyroidism, or underactive thyroid, and Hashimoto thyroiditis, the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the United States. As always, my goal is to help us live more more fulfilling lives by taking control of our health and thus feeling our best. Dr. Mazza and I hope you found this introductory episode to be interesting, and we hope you'll continue to follow this podcast. Just to recap at least some of what we covered here today, we introduced basic thyroid-related concepts. We'll build on these in future episodes. Dr. Maz's primary goal is to demystify the thyroid gland and related topics. She explained her educational focus and why the thyroid is such an interesting subject. And it looks like a butterfly. (laughs) We discussed the importance of sleep, thyroid hormones T3 and T4, the definition of thyroidology, how thyroid problems may be diagnosed, the extreme importance of the thyroid gland, thyroid hormones, and stress hormone cortisol, hair loss, and other possible symptoms of thyroid problems, how regular visits with your health care provider, like regular blood work and other tests, 
help determine what actions are needed for optimal health. And we discussed how challenging and rewarding it can be to make changes based on our unique situation and to know we can impact our thyroid health. As Dr. Mazza mentioned, our next episode will discuss hypothyroidism, underactive thyroid, and Hashimoto thyroiditis, the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the United States. We welcome your comments, show ideas, and questions for future episodes. Please send them to thyroidtalk.maza at gmail.com. You can see that in our show notes, but to spell it out, thyroid talk is one word, T-H-Y-R-O-I-D-T-A-L-K dot M-A-Z-Z-A at gmail.com. Don't forget to ask your health care provider about any specific questions regarding your wellness. This podcast is meant only for educational purposes.